internet and hosting for the British Tech Network is provided by UK2.net. Innovative, affordable and reliable web hosting. Oh, wrong video. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the Gamer Show on the British Tech Network. Welcome to uh, tonight's edition. We have very little to talk about because E3 Goodbye. was... Goodbye! <laughs> are we playing the right video this time? We are playing yeah. the right video. I, I had actually switched over to... Um, uh, I had your avatar in the background there, Sam. See? Oh, yeah. Uh, wait a minute. It'll come up here in a second. There you go. See, I had that video playing to begin yeah, with. It's nice. Um... Yeah, so we'll move back to that. Um, welcome to the Gamer Show. Uh, it's two weeks post E3, or well, actually, it's a month post E3. There's very little happened, uh, so we're gonna we're, we've got a slightly different show tonight in that we're each gonna just talk about a topic. We're gonna have a little back and forth instead. Oh, I just dropped my pin. We're gonna talk about basically the old we're game. not really doing a show. We're just moaning. <laughs> Pretty much, it's it's kind of the same as every week, but it's less set up. Do you know what? <laughs> as, if, as if anybody's going to believe that we yeah. ever set well, this up. We usually rehearse this furiously. <laughs> For hours. Naked in jelly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Uh, Do you know that's what annoys me? Yeah. Young people nowadays. In what way? Just with their face. <laughs> their face. Walking around it's with disgusting that now. face. Yeah. And... Yeah. Sorry, the weight of the world just soon crushes them. <laughs> yes, damn them, damn them all to heck. Um, so uh, what I wanted to talk about first was, um, well, actually, no, let, let's get the kind of the main thing out of the way. So uh, Satoru Awata, uh, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. I've heard it on many it different John podcasts. John Smith and you still be saying it wrong. Yeah, I don't give me. I've heard it on many different podcasts today for um, reasons that we will reveal in a second in a sort of a surprise. Um <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody kind of we got it, it elsewhere and yeah. it's everybody... publicly available knowledge <laughs> so <Yeah>. this is <laughs> everybody kind of pronounces it slightly differently but anyway um, so get, can, can I get the actual message out of the way and then we can get over that and then we can get back on because it is very sad news well he's sadly passed away he has sadly passed away at the age of 55 um, cancer uh, a bile duct growth um and this was actually revealed uh, by or announced by Nintendo on yeah. Sunday. He's been suffering it for uh, quite a while because, like, yeah, they um, thought they'd fixed it, didn't they? He's pulled in the past couple of years. He's pulled out the odds of show and whatnot, kind of because of it, and he kind of was refrained from his public appearances and whatnot, as he was obviously been it. He was treated for it, and then he came back for a bit. So, but it's obviously reared its head again. Yeah. So, sadly, he, 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 sad. Well, it's, it's quite sad because he, he, he actually seemed like a totally. It's a likeable person. Yeah. And he's only 55 exactly. as well. It's far yeah, too, it's pretty, far too pretty brutal. There was a, sorry, I'm just trying to find it now that you've mentioned that, Chiz. There was, there was actually a quote some that was getting posted all around the internet today of something that he uh, he said, which I thought was quite quite telling the kind of guy he was. It was something, uh, sorry, I'm just padding very quickly. <laughs> I did find this. I was actually planning to say it, but I wasn't planning on saying it this early and I've actually noted it down. God, how much crap were you going to say? Ah, so here we go. So point? it was actually, so the tweet I've got here is tweeted by Bungie. Um, so like all of, um, a number of different uh, um, video game sites have actually come out and just said, um, said their, uh, their sadness on uh, his passing. But uh, Bungie put a quote, uh, on my business card, I am a corporate president. In my mind, I am a game developer, but in my heart, I am a gamer and uh, his one of his main things that he wanted to do was to make sure he, he always felt that games certainly recently were getting very um, exclusive and uh, what he really wanted to do was make more exclusive gaming um, or, or casual gaming as I guess you might call it now or, or, or certainly gaming that kind of uh, opens everyone. everybody open to everybody that's a good yeah. way of describing it um, he of course he, he arrived in uh, Nintendo in 2000 uh, just after the GameCube had launched and uh, two of the biggest things that he brought to Nintendo and, and kind of the, the cash cows for Nintendo as they still stand was the, the Wii and the 3DS um, and, and those I think kind of embody his idea of this whole inclusive gaming I mean they um, they brought a whole bunch of people who would never ever have owned a game console in their living room to have a game console in their living room yeah. you know, eh, Wii's everywhere there was one thing he says well I, I can't remember his exact um, his exact Exact. Um, it it was wording, but he basically said it doesn't matter what sort of game it is. All games should be fun, 
mm-hmm. his main thing. If you make a fun game, then yeah, it doesn't matter what sort of game it is, you're in the right track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was games being fun. It was that. Yeah, I saw that through uh, uh, a few different tweets around the internet today. But I thought what would be interesting. So we, you know, it, it's very sad that he's passed away. But I, I just wanted to talk about the Wii because um, certainly for me, the Wii was was a big deal. It was kind of the first gaming console that you kind of like physically got up and did something with and kind of um it was one that you could have your kids playing along with you and that kind of stuff not that it's sandwiches of kids but um what i could uh, find some yeah because <laughs> we've all owned wii's and still own wii's in some scenarios and sam you've owned two i think you had one sold it and then got another one and then i think yeah. sold that and then got another one no you? i think I, I, don't, I don't even know they're not even they're not mine they're amy's but i don't know they accumulate <laughs> they're like buddies they are yeah um well they were, like you can't walk down the street without falling over one because they were but they were basically a money-making machine for them they, yeah. they sold bucket loads of them it's like you when, couldn't get them for hen's teeth they were yeah, like an apple product yeah it's like um, it was, yeah it's like when people think of a game like um a high selling um high selling it's game machine do you think of an xbox or or even more so um, it's a Sony PlayStation, but it was a Nintendo Wii that absolutely sold tons, probably like three times as much as the rest of the consoles of, oh, yeah. of that generation. That's because they tapped into, it was a casual crowd, into a family actually sitting around and all playing on the same thing. Totally. And see what you like about the Wii U. I think that's still the case with the Wii U as well. Certainly in my household, the Wii U is the kind of the go-to thing. Yeah, it's not done nearly as well. No. Um, I think there's been, I think they kind of marketed that wrong. They should have basically changed it. I think it confused a lot of the casual market and think it, by having the same sort of name with just a U in the end of it, so they were kind of confused by what it was. Yeah. So they, I think they, they, they kind of should have just called it something else to be honest even the Wii 2 or something just to kind of make it yeah. quite clear that it was the next the next iteration of that device that you're loving and something, you know, yeah, kids just are playing in the living room what, what does the U in it do, is there any you know I don't knowledge? actually know Let, let's look into that what does um, the U in sure Wii U start oh isn't it sad that we're padding this yeah. Wii U <laughs> as in Wii W-E-Y-O-U the tablet controller is a bit more personal. U was supposed to be a new focus for Nintendo and bringing back the games that you, Y-O-U, the major sponsor of Nintendo, want as well. The gamepad is likely to be the biggest thing, though. I thought it was going to have a, a feature where they, you had to insert something in you. <laughs> we in you. <laughs> and the me. Me in you. <laughs> no, that's just raping. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, you, 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 you think I forgot about that, mate, but I remember you put some in my drink. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to gloss over that because the <laughs> uh, the court case is still standing. The, um, so my, what was the first kind of um, big game for you in the Wii that made you kind of go, wow, I, I quite like this console. This is this is pretty awesome. Um, I, do, I, do, I, I think it was... I, I'm just... Presuming you're talking to Chase here, which is why I'm so I inside. got it because... <laughs> you liked the Wii Fit, Sam. I liked what... I, I liked it. it was trying something different, and it was all motion controls, even though now, looking back on it, it, it didn't quite play as well as what I would have liked. But yeah. it was trying something new, yeah. and, and it was brave. Awesome. And But there was a lot of times, there was a lot of games, if I had the choice of playing with a normal <laughs> controller or the Wii U remote, I kind of went the controller one way, unless... Because I always found they were just, it wasn't that well. Like you, you had games like uh, it was Red Steel, which on paper, when you actually saw like oh, on paper and when you saw like a, a demo, you're like, oh, that looks awesome. But then when you played it, you went, oh, this is horrendous. <laughs> I never, never played Red Steel. They never did a, a proper lightsaber game. No. Which, yeah, they always, that, that was sort of a, an just open insane. opportunity for me. Yeah, yeah, they should have done totally. Um, I have no idea why I don't have slicing or like whoever's in charge. It was Lucas Arts just kind of dropped the ball there. I think. I think that that, that, that was a period of time where it was Lucas Arts were just turning out a Star Wars game every now and then, mm-hmm. and it was just so destroyingly bad. Well, I think even if they'd done a bit of a. Friday night knockoff job. Yeah. Well, they, they still it. would have sold. Yeah. They totally would. Well, they would have sold. Yeah. They tried that, that with the uh, there was the Connect one that came out uh, on the 360, but that was just crap. But like, but but you had the thing. Yeah, yeah, no, in I, your I hand. mean, yeah, the, the, the Wii. It, yeah, it, 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 it was just like it was there to have some sort of lightsaber game, and you, using your force powers, a first person, or even a third person 
it was Jedi, a new Jedi Knight game, which yeah. is calling out for that. But totally. for whatever reasons, it never happened. I don't know if it was actually. Did they even have a sword? Anything like a sword? No, they, teeth. it was red oh. steel. Well, was it, I, um, was was it, yeah, red steel. With the Wii U, you've got Zelda a, as well. It, it, and a gun. It, it was a first-person sword and gun game. It was, it was red steel one was terrible. Red steel two was a vast improvement, but still not all that great. I think one of the biggest constraints with, I, and I thought I hadn't played Red Steel until you descri- described it. Then I remember, and it was because you couldn't get because you had the gun and the sword, and you had the nunchuck and the the sword. The nunchuck was basically your gun. Yeah, 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 and so you used you had the trigger obviously the gun, which was a really cool idea. If they'd been wireless, it would have made too, a bit more of a distance a difference because you couldn't get a good swing on your sword without bringing your other hand across and smacking well, yourself yeah, in the face well, because they were attached with a cable. Yeah. yeah. But, but, uh, a lot of these games with the Wii Remote was, it was all like, you didn't have to do the actual motion, you just need to do like a flick. Like, yeah, like, and then, and then, I know, but you wanted then, to yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah you wanted to do that. Thing, and you want to kind of get when you quickly realised you didn't need to do the, 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 the whole thing, it was just kind of like, well, it's yeah, it's like, not really proper motion. Quickly really. start doing Wii Sports by just sitting there. Yeah. Bowling. <laughs> I know. With I've, my I've, wrist. I've seen you bowling, that's how you do it. <laughs> bowling with your wrist, there we go. Yeah. That's, that's a show title there. <laughs> We it's, should go bowling. It's because there wasn't a hole in the wheel to stick your dick in. <laughs> I've seen you bowl. As a That's way. how I bowl. <laughs> I've seen you. I've lost seven penises <laughs> that way. Well, you, you, you've at least lost a few inches. Eh? <laughs> I didn't have inches to lose. Oh, dear. Cool. Um, so my, uh, I think my first one was probably, I, I really loved the Wii Sports. I, and it was, um, when I look back at it now and play Wii Golf, I don't know whether it's because um, the... Uh, because Wii Golf my, was good, yeah. The Wii Golf was good, the game with the Wii Sports package. Um, and now when I go back and play it just now, it's a bit poo. And I don't know whether it's because uh, my um, the Wii motes are maybe older and they're getting a little more and more damaged because well, they are about eight years old, but they're not as yeah. sensitive as they were. No, I don't like... I'd, 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 which what I kind of felt was a bit let down was they weren't true one one motion when it launched. You yeah. had to get the adapter or buy it was new ones and then they kind of upgraded them to be it was actual one. That wasn't one. a launch though. That that was a few months. That was a good. I would say a year at least after it launched that they brought out the Wii Plus things. I'd, 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 if that's what I mean. At launch, it wasn't one. Sorry, sorry, I, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. So yeah. Like, I, I'm saying it, it should have been one to one when it launched, yeah, rather okay, than like sorry, yeah. a year or two later. Yeah, but when you play with it on your own, when you go back and, and play with the original Wii Motes and stuff in golf, and it's it's, just, it's rubbish now. But um, I, I don't remember it being that rubbish. It yeah. must just be that the I was, yeah, as I say, thing. as a console hall, I wasn't a massive fan of it, but I liked the idea of it, and, and, and that's right. And it found its market, and as I say. Sold by the bucket load, and I totally did. You can actually probably talk more about the 3DS and that sort of stuff because I've, I don't think I've actually ever well, ever owned an Nintendo we handheld thing. Ever. Before we go to the 3DS, well, the other thing I just wanted to mention, and it's probably one of these games that are, is, is pretty much the only game, maybe up until sort of late last year when Mario Kart 8 came out. Um, it was Mario Kart where you had the steering wheel um, on the Wii Mo, and that was probably what sold most of the Wiis. And I would argue probably still is what sells most Wiis. If Wiis are still selling now, it's because of Mario Kart. So yeah. last I checked, Although, Mario Kart on the Wii was still selling at like the kind of 30, 40 quid mark. <coughs> um, because they've... Um... Excuse me, I... <laughs> Although I'd say it's one of the worst Mario Karts, so like um. But it was. I think it was the novelty factor. I think it was. The, yeah, I think it was yeah, that element of it. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't a massive fan of. See, I liked it. I liked Mario it. Kart. I never had a joypad for the uh, the Wii. I, I do have now for the, the the Wii U. But so everybody who played in it just it was a level playing yeah, field. Yeah. And I think that's what's kind of cool about it. It was a level playing field, and and it didn't matter whether it was my my daughter who was like kind of I don't know six or seven at the time, or me or my wife. All of us sort of had. We were, it was it wasn't completely level, but it kind of leveled out because we were all using these brand new controllers and stuff. And if I had a joypad, it would have been a totally different game. But it, it just leveled out and made it kind of nice for the the whole family. I mean, we still play some old Wii games. Wii Party. Um, what was the sequel to? Was it Wii Party something? Wii Party something? I can't remember. The sequel to Wii Party. We we still play that quite regularly. It's quite a cool little game. Um, but uh, but yeah, so the 3ds. I, so I own a 3DS. I really like my 3DS. They sold tons as well. They did. Uh, We're a bit of a although, gimmick. Yeah, they're, they're a gimmick. They keep releasing a different one all the time. Like the one that's just like it doesn't fold over. The one with the extra large screen, and then there's just like there's been 
it's and you got the 2DS, which is effectively yeah. 3DS, but doesn't have a fold in it and it isn't 3D. Yeah. I mean, I, I so I've got a 3DS um, XL. No, is it the, yes, it is the XL. It's 3DS XL. Sam, will be boring you. You have folded your, leaned straight out shot. I thought the camera was on you. <laughs> I'm there, aren't I? No. Just. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> I'm really sore. Right, okay. From helping B yesterday, sitting up is, this <laughs> chair is difficult as well. Well, I tell you what, we're, we're, we're going to move studios um, after this show, and we will get you some nice comfy chairs for the new studio. I just, I would quite like the bean bags, to be honest again. Well, we can get you the bean bags, that's absolutely fine, we just have to find a way of attaching a microphone to a bean bag, that's all. Um, well, no, it's on the desk. Yeah, yeah, we can do something, it doesn't, it, never mind. Um, so... Yeah, the 3DS, yeah, as you say, Chess, they were bringing out tons and tons of different models yeah. as, as time went on. I um, I have the 3DS XL, and I really like the XL, like the screen size on the XL is really nice. I switched off the 3D after you stopped playing that sort of gimmicky, um, uh, I forgot the game that came with it, but basically it was like a gun game, and it was sort of augmented reality. And so when you moved the DS around, you could see the actual surroundings, and things were growing on it, and you had to shoot them and stuff. Yeah. And that was cool, but it was cool for like a minute, and then... When you went back to it, I just switched the 3D straight off. And uh, I, I just liked it for being able to play Mario on the move. And, and Mario yeah. Kart was okay on it. It wasn't great. Um, but like, just play it. Like, I, I, I had all the old Mario games, and you could pick up the old Mario games uh, from, like, the I think the, I don't think Mario World was on there. Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, I think, were on there. Um, you could buy them on the Nintendo store and download them for like, a couple of quid or something like that. They were, they were awesome for that. But- I mean, thing is, this guy was kind of like in charge when all this was going on. So totally, that, that's just kind of what we're done a good job of. Like, as like this, this was a time where um, Sony were coming off probably the back of the highs of the PS2, Xbox, uh, it was Microsoft, Xbox were trying to find their feet, and everyone kind of felt it was Nintendo were maybe going a bit lost, and then they hit out of the park with the Wii, with the Wii U and the 3DS. Well, when it comes to handhelds. They're the king of the handheld of the handhelds because totally. um, the, the Sony Vita and PSP haven't even scratched the surface compared to them. Yeah, and yeah. it's Microsoft have went. Yeah, a waste of time going down that alley. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, it's Nintendo's got it sewn up. Yeah, completely. It's um, it is a, a a great little handheld device. Just, I mean, I still carry it in my bag for like when I'm going to. Uh, work trips and things like that and um, I always get some funny looks sitting in airplanes full of businessy people they're all sitting there reading documents and powerpoints and I whip out a 3DS does it really it means have the place <laughs> sorry Sam do, does it really have do, does it really have a place anymore what the 3DS well handheld gaming I mean so, we all have smartphones which I are see, surely capable of doing exactly totally the are. same things but for some strange but you reason, need buttons exa- well, I think that's, and a D-pad. I think you're right there, Chiz, because I would never play a game like Mario Brothers. Like I've played Mario Brothers, which are platformy games. As I'm sure everybody listening to this knows, um, platformy games, and they're really relatively big. And uh, I've played full games in the 3DS and completed. I think I honestly have completed more games on my 3DS than I've completed games on pretty much any other console I've owned. That's entirely believable. Yeah, yeah. And it's mainly because of the amount of dead time I have where 3DS is pretty much the only console I and have. And how long you poo. And how long I poo. Well, actually, no, it's... It's it's generally how long I have to climb back off the toilet. Never mind. It's um. Speaking of which, I had hot snakes last night. Really, mm. really. Hot yeah. hot snakes. Hot snakes. What's hot snakes it's, actually? It's when your poop comes out like a hot snake. <laughs> I've never felt a hot snake before. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Anyway, so um, and I I think it is buttons. I think it entirely buttons. Um, can you not get? Like a clippy, game. totally can. Uh, it's not the same though, and I Why? think I, I just don't know if the, the the money and the effort's been put into it. Because uh, I've had a go of some of the adapters you can get for uh, the the iPhones and things like that to put these games in um, to to use these kind of joy pads, and they just feel a little bit cheap. They kind of feel like, do you remember the? Um, what was that games console that we we bought for the show? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. The Ooh, yeah, yeah, the Ooh, yeah, and the controller just felt a bit cheap. Yeah, it was the buttons nasty. just felt a bit uncomfortable. It just felt like the extra triggers are going to break after totally. three uses. So. Yeah, it just felt a bit hollow and, and cheapy, and that's what these these consoles kind of feel like. I think the other element is because you can't, as a game developer, guarantee that somebody's going to have one of these devices attached. Yeah, you can't rely on those consoles, it's, and so people yeah. are making sorry those controls. I think. 
Um, it's a touch screen where certain where certain games works totally fine, but it does limit you on what sort of games work on smartphones. Mm-hmm, but, totally. but when you've got like something like the 3DS, which is is a touch screen with its two screens and buttons, then it opens up more. You got you can put any sort of game on that and kind of make it work within yeah. reason. Yeah, I've only found about two, possibly three smartphone games to be enjoyable yeah um, I'm just not a smartphone gaming person at all I, I play kind of now and again I've got um, the version of Tetris you can get which is I think is the officially licensed version of Tetris is uh, really really quite cool um, and that's that's worthy of you know the morning motion or uh, a plate like a short plane flight or something like that but and it's the same as those other games so the um, what's the name of that one that uh, it was big recently and I've totally blanked on the name where you uh, you basically chase llamas on a snowboard. I forgot what that was called. Something adventure. Um, Hang on, I'll just bring my phone up. I'll tell you in a second. It's a phone game, I probably won't do that. Uh, Alto's Adventure. It's actually it's a beautiful game. It's got quite a nice soundtrack as well. Uh, Monument Valley as well. But, I mean, I could probably mm. list them in five or six games off the top of my head that are yeah. actually that amazing. Um, actually worth it. Totally, yeah. Compared uh, to the billions of them out there, which are just... Oh, just absolute rubbish, yeah. Just absolute rubbish. But um, yeah, 3DS, I think, because you could actually have buttons and so people were putting development in it actually makes them fairly decent. And there's Reggie. Hi, Reggie. Uh, So this is the advert from um, E3 2010 for the 3DS, uh, which obviously started with uh, Mr. Um, Iwata. Yep. Anyway, beginning there. Rest in peace. Indeedly do. And we should just say that is a sort of the last thing that we ever saw of him was from me, uh, the Iowa uh, Mr. Iowata, um or Iwata San, I guess is or Saturu San, is it how is you're supposed to say the San? I think it's after the first thing. I can't remember. Um uh, where Nintendo's first full year financial results uh, had returned to profitability for the first time since two thousand eleven, so he went out on something of a high. So uh, rest in peace, sir. Uh, Chiz, you wanted to talk about the state of video games being released, and you wanted to get on that there soapbox and just just go off on them. Well, yeah, it's becoming far too president where everything, well, not everything, but I don't know, like, there's way too many things. There's way out. too many things launching with glaring errors. Like, not the bug, fair enough, that happens, but there's too many games which have got bugs where you kind of go, how did this get past? testing is this like or like it, it probably was picked up in testing but no one bothered actually repairing it just kind of went oh it's fine we'll just we'll we'll we'll, we'll just fix that once it's out and yeah and one of these games was batman arkham knight in the pc which was so broken in fact that they've removed it from steam i don't think i, th- I don't think it's still in steam at the moment I, I don't think it's appeared back on yet i got this game with my graphics card and installed it. It ran, but the frame, but, but with the sort of power of my PC, it, even at the lowest sort of settings, the frame rate was terrible. It, it dropped really badly, and it would just freeze every now and then. And the the settings you would have on it for a PC game weren't really acceptable for a PC game. It, the game looked well. You, you could do the benchmark, which you could, which would show you any sort of frame rate from well, obviously zero to whatever your PC mm-hmm. can do. So you're getting over sixty frames per second, even or around about. Like I, I would try and aim for a steady um, it's sixty frames per second for 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 all, all my PC games. I can't do that. I'll try and look at at thirty or forty. And the benchmark you could get up to that, but as soon as you started running the game, the game locked you to thirty frames per second right. with no option to. You'd actually have to go into your game settings and change a file yourself right. to un- un- unlock that which is just ridiculous anyway for a PC game it's like, which seems like it was a cock up somewhere where the benchmark would go that high yet the actual full game didn't even bother mm. and yeah and it's just been one thing and, and like it launched with loads and loads of people going nuts and they've removed it and currently trying to fix it which um, it, apparently it wasn't Rocksteady who did the PC port they did the PS4 and Xbox One version while okay. A uh, third-party studio where the game was put to them to make the PC port, which I think they've done PC ports before and done all right jobs in the past. But this one, I think, like I read, some of them are only a twelve-man team, and I think basically they didn't have enough time or enough manpower. And yeah, the <coughs> game basically should have been delayed. Or Warner Brothers kind of, and I'm also read somewhere that it's War- it's Warner Brothers knew the game was in this state but released it anyway. When what point shocking. does it go off? 
but uh, I know everything can now be updated through yeah, your the internet. But at what point do they, you know, how long ago did they send Paul, it off to Paul, be burnt onto disc? Paul, mm-hmm. Bob, stop playing the video playing. This is all the cutscenes, so it's probably quite a lot of spoilers getting played here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, and you know, Chase does like spoilers. Well, I, I'm okay, but I've seen it, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I, what, I, I just read sorry. that and I thought that's probably not a good video. To play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At, at what point do they get sent off to be burnt to disc? So the yeah, um, my 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 real question is, you know, if if they all got sent off like a month ago mm-hmm. to be burnt to disc, at that point they should have. A working version. It yeah. shouldn't be well, sent. There's too many games with day one patches that seem to get the game. Um, it's like a game should be working anyway, and a day one patch just yep. improves it. Yeah. But there's so many games where I've read like um, where, where basically a game's come out and it's folk report. Right? Basically, if you got this game without the day one patch, all these features don't work. This doesn't work. It's terrible. Then the day one patch fixes everything. But it's like, well, why is that not in the disc already? Yeah. Why is that a day one patch? It's like screwing somebody up who say they've bought a game and say they're away for the weekend, they don't have internet access and want to play the game, but they can't, but they can't get the, it's a, it's a day one patch because it's, it's, a, it's a broken mess. Oh, because they yeah. don't have internet access, but it's just, so, I mean, it's like, when is a, a day one patch, I think, there's nothing wrong with a day one patch if it improves what's already a working game, not when, a game shouldn't be even on disc broken. No, I'd have that, like, that's, not, that's like, I, I know I can, I know, where's a, I suppose, where's a line of acceptable bugs and I think we all, we all know a game breaking bug is when it when when it's when it's actual performance or the audio or it's cutscenes or basically crashes major things like that which hamper you actually playing the game. If it's an odd bug, obviously I don't know like what do you... stupid ones from like like Skyrim the... with the with the giant punches and things like that. Yeah, like um, not things... bothered about that yeah. at all. Those like, are just rare, like sorry, rare bugs that it takes a certain sort of few things that happen at the same time to cause. Fair mm-hmm. enough. But if it's something that you can't go through this door without the game crashing, that's yeah, a major yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, in the interests of just having a, a debate about it, mm-hmm. they, there will be um, there will be deadlines that come into play. And those deadlines, because I'm assuming in most cases that the, the, the people who, put the, who actually make the, the actual discs is a separate company. I, I imagine in like big, big video game houses and stuff yeah, like that. They usually announce when an, a game's gone, um, um, when a game, they say like uh, a game's gone, it, it's gold and that's basically, that's it ready yeah, and pressed yeah, the to disc. Master. Yeah, the gold master. So it goes to, goes to disc. So if that goes out to a third party company who are charging X amount of money for to for for to create these discs and stuff, mm-hmm. and if they have to push it back at some point, somebody generally won't be a developer. I accept that unless it's like a small games house. But yeah. in big situations, it will be a board of people who have never had anything to do with development. Some some of them will have at some point in their past, but most of them probably haven't. And they'll have to make the decision. Right, okay, if we move this back, company X, we'll call them Disc Magic for want of a better phrase, it's probably a company that is called that, but never mind. Um, <laughs> Angry phone goes, I'm the manager of this man. I do not like the way you've portrayed my company. So uh, Here's so the- a box of Angry Bees. <laughs> <laughs> so Disc Magic uh, uh, CEO, uh, or whoever controls that, is going, right, it's going to cost you X hundred thousand or X million or something like that if we push this back because their factory will be waiting for the next game that's coming along in two weeks' time and they'll have put all their plans <laughs> in place and everything like that. And uh, just, they, have sorry, to, they have to catch stop, all the bees. Stop. I've just got this <laughs> image in my head of Chase only ev- just wandering around his house in a beekeeper's outfit <laughs> just in case no, no, no. hits him with another box of angry bees. <laughs> I, I've got an image of Paul reading that letter and then still opening the box. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst eating jam. And yeah. <laughs> Just going, so it's like, it hesitates for a minute and goes, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here is the box of bees uh, from Disc Magic. Uh, so when you actually want to bring up footage that's properly relevant interest and it takes you half an hour, <laughs> and it's pointless crap like this, it's instantaneous. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so this this guy from Disc Magic, whilst prepping his B box, is um, is given this this ultimatum, which will happen. I I, I mean, I, I don't work in the video game industry, but these deadlines do exist, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so they'll have to make a call and go right, okay, 
do we feel that the bugs in this game? But you just need to look at um, it's Ubisoft. Sure, they'll see the, the track record of like the way what happened with but Assassin's somebody... Creed Unity. No, go. No, 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 it's that. better to delay it and take flat for that rather than long run get yeah. No, 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 dragged but... through the mud for releasing a broken. So the guy game. has to burn him when he when he when he has to burn him because he's got other orders coming sure. up and sure. he has to. Right, that's fine. And uh, what I was saying before is, in an ideal world, it should not be even considered to be sent away to be burnt to disc before it's done. But on the off chance that it is, and this is a PC now, game, a lot of it's digital anyway. Yeah. True. So that's all the of these the things, disc, yeah. P- PS4, Xbox One, and PC, really, they're, they're all expecting us to have an internet connection, and and the PC one hooks up through Steam, so it has to have an internet connection to yeah. to be um, activated anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, so it- as Cheers said, just friggin' delay it until you fix the coding. You've got a patch that can go out, and boom, it's a working game. There's, yeah. there's absolutely no excuse now to no. send it out in a horrific so, mess. And I, I, it's made it, it like it's Warner Brothers have taken a lot of bad press for this, so the right idea would have been to delay the game. It, it turns out in this scenario, but somebody somewhere will be sitting. Well, no, it's, prior it's, to it's, this, it's never a good scenario to, to release a broken game, though. No, no, no. So, okay, from a consumer's perspective, especially if yes. they know it's broken. So, I, I agree. For me and you and Sam sitting here in this room right now, we do not want to pay for a broken mess. No, hundred percent agree with that. But. From a business perspective, somebody somewhere will be sitting prior to this being released with a spreadsheet with two numbers on it. And one of them says, releasing a slightly, or in their opinion, however percentage of broken game, will cost us this much in bad press and returns and all sorts of other stuff. And there'll be a number against it. And on the other hand, delaying it will cost us this much. If the column on the left is greater than the column on the right, they will not release the game. If the column on the right is greater than the column on the left, then they will release it, or likely will release it. I don't think it's quite as cut and dry as that. But I, I totally take that on board, and I, I can really see where you know you're playing devil's advocate there because. Oh no, I agree. From a consumer's totally perspective, yes, yes you, we should be buying yeah, broken games. I think yeah, Warner Brothers have got like they maybe even on it was goodwill they should have actually taken the hit and delayed the game because they're already got quite a lot of bad press for the whole. It's um, the pricing of their DLC for Batman, which is mm-hmm. just an absolute joke as well. It's like pay like f- forty quid for six months of of DLC, yeah, and yeah. they've got so much. Of, Do you like, think that's one of those things? There's day one, so sorry, and sorry, uh, uh, there's so much pre-order. There's DLC which are available from day one, mm-hmm. which should all be on the disc. And much of mine, but they're all at different vendors, so you can't get them right, all. Okay. Uh, you can't get them all unless you buy them. Like what, I think, until uh, later on, uh, when you can, yeah, and then it's like five pound a piece or whatever. And it's just like it's like. Oh, Piss off all that crap. Yeah, I know. That 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 needs to die. Yeah, I did DLC is so, especially paid yeah. DLC. But do you not think it's gonna be one of those things like um it was a Project Cars recently that they were planning to do all that and then they actually gave it away for free because the game was that broken. It was no, Project Cars. No, it was, was, um, no, uh, uh, it was another racing uh, game, wasn't it? No, it was a Sage Good Unity, like it, it's, um, it, it was. It, we were talking about Project pass. Cars that same day, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah it, no, it was right. it was a Sage Good it was, you know, it was that broken that they gave away. Well, the season pass was supposed to be something you paid for, but they ended up anyone who bought the game got mm-hmm. the season. Well, the thing that was supposed to be the season pass yeah. with it in, in, anyway, which I think Warner Brothers can have to do for at least the PC owners. I would imagine. So, I yeah, don't think, think if they had delayed it that a game like Batman would have actually lost. I, d- I don't think no. anyone would have turned around and gone, oh, I'm not I so it that, was a, that was a weird swear, but it yeah, was a swear. It, I'm not it, yeah. buying it because they delayed it by uh, no, but if a it's, month. It would have affected the PC sales because what would have happened was a lot of people... Actually, it's happened anyway, because what, what, a lot of people probably did what I did, where um, either the other pre-ordered it was a PC game or got free with a graphics card like me, on the day of the release, uh, installed it, played it, didn't work, and then drove to a shop and bought it for the PS4. Yeah. <laughs> so they've actually I, I sold it twice. Or Xbox One. Xbox. I, I don't so know. It's yeah. encouraged sales. I think, yeah. you, I think you dirty... Probably, I think you Although, probably are in the minority, Chiz. I would not have done that. Yeah, no, it, um, yeah, I, I think... It, I'm not, I'm not I, saying you're the only person. It's Rocksteady have actually made an absolutely brilliant game, and the port, the version they've done Xbox, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 work brilliantly, but... Yeah, I know. I, I think everyone yeah. has to take a, like I think Warner Brothers mainly, Rocksteady a little bit, and why they didn't do the PC version as well. Maybe they mm-hmm. felt they didn't have the manpower to do all three versions. Then it's an okay, fair enough. They've rather than all all three versions taking a massive hit and taking longer. 
they've focused on two and gotten somebody else to do mm-hmm. the PC version. That's worked in the past. I think it was the it was the Deus Ex game. They did the same, and the folks who did the PC port actually did a great job of it. But the guys who have done this PC port haven't, and whether that's because the Warner Brothers didn't give them enough time, enough manpower, or cash, or whatever, it's just not worked. So basically, everyone has to take a respond. Everyone has to take a hit here. Um, the, the, the guys who did um, it's a PC port. Uh, um, it's Rockstar themselves, but mainly I think it's Warner Brothers. Yeah, and I think it's Warner Brothers. They, I mean. I'm assuming it's Warner Brothers who, as well, will be dictating the the releases. So oh, yeah. taking well, away from the um, they're the publisher just um, yeah, actually totally. controlling everyone's purse strings. So, so taking away from the whole precedent of CDs, which was a discussion we were having at the beginning there, and uh, there will be a window in which Warner Brothers or somebody else down the chain is saying this is the window that this game yeah. has to come out in, although because it can't coincide. Games get delayed with all the other. time, but it's like. Like yeah, it's but not the first time just like it's it's, surely it's already been delayed twice. They just delay it one more time for one format. It wasn't getting delayed on the PS4 and then Xbox One. Just to be, it just needed delayed on the PC because the Xbox One and, yeah. and PS4 versions. What, what, I've, what I played it's PS the P, um, the PlayStation Four version totally fine, and I've heard the Xbox One version is totally fine as well. Mm-hmm. And then they bring those out, and if they'd been really clever, they would have done those. And then made such an exceptional job on the PC yeah. version. And we said a later people date, would have like come bought on the did PC with, anyway. Like what yeah. it, it was Rockstar did with Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah. They didn't believe it at the same time, so they knew it was going to take longer. And like they, they wanted to do something with it, and they they, they had the right idea. And the, and that's why I actually made folk buy it buy that game twice as well. I, I would argue though that what Rockstar did with that, and it probably was quite a percentage to do with what we're discussing here, but um they also added a whole bunch of extra features to the yeah. PC version. Although they, like yeah, um like for and they also any PC it. game you should like every PC game should should you should have a big list of graphical things you can change to alter it to your sort of rig. Mm-hmm. And so every PC game should have that and run it at whatever frame rate you can actually manage. Yeah. Okay. And what your refresh rate of your monitor, if it's up to 144, then 144 frames per second if, you, if you've got the... The availability. Yeah. Indeed. Good discussion. Sam, what, what were you wanting to bring to the table upon this eve? Absolutely nothing. Yet. Absolutely nothing. Well done, Sam. Thanks for uh, thanks for contributing. Oh, we don't talked about something about Mad Max before we started. No, uh, you got any more about uh, Cheers was saying something about a sound thing. They've got a sound thing? Yeah, a sound thing? Wow. It does mm. sounds. All of them. All of the I, sounds. I maybe should have read the full article, but it, 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 it was basically... <laughs> no, that's yeah, not how we work this show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was something about basically they've got like a, some sort of audio tech where your engine, you, the sound of your car, you can hear it from anywhere about. I don't know why you're, you, somebody, somebody else is driving your car. I think you've got this is the new Mad Max game. It, yeah. And, um, which and, is going to be phenomenal. And it renders sure. the echoes in a cool way, apparently, which just hasn't been done in a game before, I think. So, yeah, it's like, well, we'll see what it sounds like. But I, I was saying before, it's it's good that they're putting effort into that because it's the sort of game where, especially if it's a driving game, you want the car sounds to sound great. Yeah. Especially if you're going to be in your car for that amount of time in the game, then it Do has to be satisfying. Are you in the game awesome. in the um, in the car a lot in this? Game? I think so. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, 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 I would say so. Yeah. Okay. The the thing that will annoy me about this game is if it turns into like, do you remember that game Rage? Mm-hmm. Which is kind of it was all right. It was quite yeah, fun. It was. It wasn't the, great. It, it was graphic nice and the animations of the yeah. it was enemies the way they ran about and moved and got shot and died. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. But it did kind of feel up until it was a certain section of the game like kind of opened out and you went this is cool and then it went then it closed itself yeah. in especially in the game it all, it went it closed itself right down yeah. and turned itself into a, a A to B shooter and then kind of ended when you felt like you're only halfway through the game yeah and, and then kind of eh, it's going to be a sequel but not really because we've abandoned it yeah. <laughs> so what's the um I I I know we've talked about this game before but um what is this kind of an open worldy type so you're a bloke yeah. called Max. Right, right, that that makes sense. I got and that from you the are title. A bit mad. Fairly ape poo. Right. In the head. Okay. Right. Good. And you drive Fun so far. You drive around yeah. in your car. Okay. And you smash into people. Is that it? And your car's a, a bit of a weapon and you can modify the car and you can get different cars and you can go and drag I'm, I'm sure there's a bit a harpoon gun in thing. It. Yeah, you can drag away like Bits of scrap metal to weld onto yeah, your car okay. for armor and, and stuff. It's all about trying to customize your own car, building your own car and whatnot. Yeah. And it's basically got the fighting mechanics from Batman and Shadow. As Mordor. every game coming yeah. out these days yeah. does, yeah. yeah. If it works, so. Oh it, yeah, yeah, I know. I but get that. I think its major selling point is it is it um, is its car stuff and whatnot, which is quite right. cool. But yeah, okay. it, it looks hopefully quite well. From what I've seen of it, 
it looks pretty solid. So, Sam, you were saying that like bullets are at a premium in this. There's hardly well, any. In the, in the Mad Max world, world, yeah, bullets are. I, <laughs> yeah. I was saying beforehand. I don't think I've ever seen a Mad Max film. What? Yeah, no, none of them. Right, I'll I'll, I'll hold them. <laughs> I'll hold them down. You work the kidneys. <laughs> no, I don't think I have. Are they worth the watch? Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I've been, I can't even mind too much of the second or third one, but I enjoy the first one. And the new well, one's... the actual first one. Yeah. And and, uh, and The first one's mental. Yeah, that's why I like it. And um, and the brand new one, uh, Fury Road's really good. So the first one doesn't really kind of connect up to the rest of them. The first one, he is... It, it's it's when society's just kind of teetering on the edge of falling into post-apocalyptic mentalness, and he's a he's a cop, and mm. yeah, he is basically his wife and child get run over, right? And okay. and and he loses it, and and that's that's the whole why mad uh, why uh, Max is mad, okay. okay? And then the second one, um, the the. Pooh has hit the windmill and everything has gone mental and there's these quite nice people pumping some oil and some mental people trying to get at the oil and uh, yeah he sorts that all out and then the third one there's t- Tina Turner <laughs> there's Tina Turner oh yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm familiar with that and, and, and a midget and, a, and a, <laughs> a midget and a down syndrome <laughs> Giant and Mad Max kills the down. Well, no, he doesn't actually. Someone else does, and they have a fight, and then everything goes mad. And then there's some kids, weirdly, and they save the kids with and like a razor boomerang. Thing, yeah, it's, it? oh no, that's in it's the, the sec- second one. The second one, all right. He's brilliant. Yeah, he's just a feral. Kid, the feral kid, yeah. he can't even talk. He just growls. He's great. <laughs> nice. Uh, Which one's his dog? Is that two as well? He's got a dog. Yeah. Yes, two. And and it died. Did it die? Yeah, yeah it's I, really upsetting. I can't remember. Bit. Uh, mm. Two and three, I'm really hazy on. And then there's the newest one. Yeah, which I don't want to know anything about because I do actually plan to watch that. Which it's good. Is full on phenomenal. Really? And is the reason why I now have a midget with a guitar sellotaped to the front of my van. Why, why do you it, keep Amy there? I was going to say she's not cold. <laughs> I don't care. Everyone <laughs> should travel with a guitar game. <laughs> um, I, we just <laughs> literally... Just been, <laughs> hot off the press. Cord. Yeah. Hot, literally hot off the press. Uh, we, I, we literally just got a message from Ed Marshall. This is as we speak. Um, he just sent a message into the Facebook group. You just told him now. Yeah, we're, no, we're he actually just recording messaged. Ed. You could be in the chat room. Gutted, I am missing the live show, but looking forward to the podcast, Paul. Get your finger out and get it up ASAP. Genuinely looking forward to Chizzy's F1 review. Hope all goes well. Um, so, Chizzy, are you doing an F1 review tonight? Um, yeah, can do. Well, <laughs> you weren't planning on it. <laughs> I'm about, I'm about to, I didn't even consider it. <laughs> well, it's like I've got um, Batman the King review as well, but. Um, all right, have you got more to say over the Batman? Well, I suppose you've got the actual game. Okay, you, about the game. You, you review Batman, I'll handle F1. Okay. <laughs> uh, we should also say thank you very much to Ed. He was keeping us posted. He was at Silverstone for the British yeah, Grand Prix yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was Nico Rosberg who you had no idea. I had no was. idea. He looked, uh, he looked like a footballer. That would have been my guess. He had a footballer look about him. <laughs> oh my God. I presumed um, he was a driver. Because or Also, we had, we had Warwick he Davis. He, had, he put yeah. up a selfie with Warwick Davis as well, which yeah. is quite cool. Um, and he was also, uh, he was playing... Um, Robin and he managed to get Silverstone in the gate. Yeah, he was uh, playing on a, a sort of a Formula One, pro, sort of a... Is it, it was a Formula One car you sat in. Yeah, it was, it was the 2014 game, but yeah, not, right, not okay. the new one, weirdly. Yeah, so that guy there, he looks like that magician guy. He's also got a selfie with some guy that looks like a magician. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure who that is. Is that like Donnie Darko or something? I don't know who that guy is. Donnie Darko? <laughs> it's a bloke in a film. <laughs> uh, f- is that f- Harry Jake Potter? Jake Gyllenhaal character. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, that's the guy I thought looked like a footballer. That guy there I knew was a driver. He quite clearly is a yeah, driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like you're showing the screen. Like oh, yeah, nobody else can see it. Screen, yeah. I, I'm forgetting I'm not sharing my screen no. here. Sorry. Um, what? You're pointing with your finger at it. <laughs> but no one can see what you're pointing at. Yeah. What, who's that street magician guy? What's his name? Um, oh, I know what you mean. The really boring one. David, uh, Dynamo. David Blaine. Is it Dynamo? Is that guy Dynamo? David Blaine. I don't know. That guy there? No, it's not It's it's not David Blaine. No, no it's but not David Blaine. It, it, no. might, it might be Dynamo. I have no idea who's who Dynamo. He's the basically crap British version of him. He looks like Dynamo. <laughs> see, there we go. 
See, I, I think it was Dynamo he saw. Look, when you, I've got the photographs here. Hang on, I should be bringing this up with here. I don't know why I'm doing it there. I don't think it's that interesting, is it? It really isn't, actually. I'm padding. <laughs> Let's just pull <laughs> Ed Marshall's holdy pictures Jeez, up and Jeez. judge them all. We've got nothing else yeah, to no. talk about. Right, right, right okay. So this the whole is, show yeah. is padding. Let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, bring up oh. Ed's... Uh, well, can you actually bring up a picture hold, of him as opposed to a tiny snaps. little circle? <laughs> and okay. we'll judge his bikini wear. <laughs> okay, uh... Okay, let's see if we can find uh, Ed's holiday snaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, there yes, we go. there we go. <laughs> uh, we, we actually, we've got Ed's holiday snaps here. So this is a picture of Ed Marshall on holiday. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get this in shot here because it's um, it's not really going very well so far. Um, hold on. I'm just going to see if I can get this in shot. Uh, uh, there we go. Hold on. This was uh, 10 minutes before the sodomy started. <laughs> so this is this is Ed Marshall on holiday. So if all of you hear about this guy, Ed Marshall, that contacts the show quite often, that is Ed. Um, <laughs> that was obviously before he, uh, he had, like after he had the tongue oh, tuck. Yeah, no, no, he's definitely done a bit of Photoshop in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's not normally that yeah. shorn. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, sorry, we digress, we digress. So, um, Chiz, you were going to... Uh, oh, actually, no, I'll do the adverts first. So, uh, this podcast and all the others in the British Tech Network are brought to you by the absolutely superb and shiny, shiny people at UK2. They provide all of the servers and all of the bandwidth uh, for us to get all of our shows out to your amazing ears. This is show number 71. 71 shows we've done. Um, and uh, if you want to go back to any of them, you can head on to the archives at britishtechnetwork.com and you'll be able to find all of our old shows. Same with all the other shows in the network. If you want to go back to the really old Bagel Tech days of the Big Show and the Mac Show, they're all in there. If you want to get some great money off discount deals uh, from British Tech Network uh, for UK2, you head on over to britishtechnetwork.com forward slash sponsors and you will see all the voucher codes and things like that there. Uh, also, if you uh, ever want to log into your account again, please use britishtechnetwork.com forward slash UK2 because then that gives us the kudos for sending you there um, instead of having found the vouchers on some weird voucher code site or something like that. So UK2, they're absolutely superb. Please support them because they support British Tech. The other people I just want to mention is the fantastic people People over at 100 TB, the live stream that you are not watching just now um, because it's quite quiet in the chat room tonight. Uh, the live stream that you're not watching is uh, 100 supported by 100TB.com. So thank you very much, uh, the folk over there. Patreon is a, a service you can use to give us your hard-earned cash. If you head on over to BritishTechNetwork.com forward slash Patreon or Patreon.com and search for British Tech Network, they both work. You will find our page and please uh, send us anything that you can that you want to support us with. Just uh, anything from a dollar upwards is really very much appreciated. It pays for studio and stuff like that. We don't drink or eat any of the funds, um, nor do we spend it to buy food or drink. It's like an internet version of dropping money in a bucket for a dancing monkey. Exactly. And Sam is your dancing monkey. So please send money his way. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. No, you just bought cheers. a tiny jacket that makes her look like one of those little monkeys. <laughs> and I've told her that several times. And my mum uh, agreed with me uh, while she was showing her the jacket. I, I think if me and Paul put our, 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 our heads together, we could actually find a way of superimposing you into Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's the first one. In, in the Raiders of Lost Ark, if, Instead of a little monkey, it's just you. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> it superimposes you just wearing the jacket and face. I can do that. <laughs> Main acting all the scenes, but if you superimpose it onto that. Get me oh, a, I've a got a fez, actually. Get you me just the jacket and a tiny Harson pair Ford of shoulder, red, red shorts. Your I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> cool. Grand. Uh, cheers. F1. Or what do you want to talk about? Batman. Uh, it's up to you. We'll talk Batman. So. Okay, go Batman first. Um, yep. Yeah, um... <laughs> it's, 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 okay. Like, I can't wait. Really talk about like the story's fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. Like, and, and it wraps up the three sort of like all four of like. Although Rock said he kind of said that it was their sort of trilogy, but I like they've actually worked in lots of story elements from Batman Arkham Its Origins, which was made by a, a different studio, which they, um, which, which was in the same world but set kind of at the start of Batman, right? And there's a lot of like there's a lot of, they, they, they took a lot of good ideas from that and actually used it in Arkham Knight. So it's not like it's a slap to the face of the guys who made that game before. They've taken the good ideas and and, and carried it over. But um, so I like that, and I can't really dive too much into the story without ruining anything. But I'd say I say I I really enjoyed. it. I thought it was f fantastic. 
So and when you say it follows on from the story, I mean, how? So I, I, I completed both the first um, two, but I, I, I honestly can't uh, remember much of the actual plot. I mean, well, yeah, like um, it can't. Like, it, it continues on from Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, yeah, and it takes elements from um, it, uh, from Arkham Origins. Yeah, still on that word. Sorry, yeah. but um, it takes elements from that. Although you don't need to have played that game, but it takes like okay. yeah, I never there's, took Origins. Yeah, there's certain characters and gameplay ideas they've taken from that and put into this game. But you, you, you like if you played it, you go, oh, right, like they've not ignored that game. That's good, but. You don't need to have played it to actually to be concerned with. Okay. And um, but yeah, the major thing over on Poi this one, the, the game changer in it is Poi the Batmobile, which seems to have split people. There's, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of people who seem to be hating on the Batmobile, and like, which I'm not. I, I, I think the Batmobile's fantastic. Like, it's when it's one of the most cool and satisfying. Like, any time you could be standing in the street or or um, it's up high. Up on top of a building, you just aim at the ground, or just look at the ground and press a button. A bat symbol appears, you, and Batman will jump towards that so it's that area, and then the bat will be able to just rumble in from a certain from a certain a, a certain direction, slide in front of you, and you'll just jump straight in in a really smooth so, so it's in a smoothie while wiping out everyone else who's who's stupid enough to be in its way. Right, and the element, the way they've stopped the Batmobile from basically, well, Batman probably does kill a lot of people in this game with the Batmobile. But the way they've worked it is, in the Batmobile's got a, a defense. Well, they never explain it. You just assume when you're driving around. It's a bump car. Yeah, it, it basically anyone who makes, <laughs> yeah, except it electrifies everyone. So like, um, basically, it's got it must have like a say it's got like a magnetic f- 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 field around it. Anyone who's too close gets electrified and is knocked away from the car. Right, okay, okay. But they probably break the neck off the wall they hit afterwards. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, but and I, I th- and there's so many people have like seem to be saying, oh, it, 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 it turns into a tank, it's so not Batman, but it's, it's got guns in it, Batman doesn't use guns. It's like, if these people have been ignored in Batman films and comics for the last 30 mm. years. Mm. He's had guns on his planes and cars and, and, and all sorts of... One of the most revered Batman stories is Frank Miller's uh, The Dark Knight Returns. And the Batmobile in that is a massive tank. It's like a size yeah. of a building, yeah. and like, and even more so than one. And and folk are just always oh, we'll ignore that. But we'll, we'll 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 take issue with the tank like mode of the Batmobile in, in this game. It's just kind of like why it, it makes total sense. And like, and and the folk complain about it's the controls. I never had a problem with it at all. It takes a wee, a wee while to get used to and master, but. What game doesn't that take with it? Like, yeah. a, a folk expect it to be instantly a good straight away, and if they're not, yes, it, it, it's, it's a game's fault. Yes, so, they are. They are. Well, they're stupid. The whole point <laughs> of the game is because... you learn to get. Like, it's, you learn the mechanics of it, and you get better. But you practice with it, and you get better. If you're instantly good at a game, where's the challenge? It's the whole dumbing down games mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, but um, people I, do think that they yeah. should automatically be. F- yeah, but awesome. Anyone who says the Batmobile's crap in this game are, are, are wrong. It's fantastic. And um, I've really, I've really enjoyed that element, and um, uh, they've just kind of built on, on, on improved on everything else. Um, uh, the, the size and scope of the city just. Um, I mean, is that bigger than yeah, Arkham City? Yeah, because that was that was equally bigger than uh, Arkham yeah. Asylum. And, um, and it's just a city, and not a building. And it's the sort of height you can glide to, and how fast you can you, you, like um, you, you can glide around a lot faster. You can actually basically, even if you don't like the Batmobile. You can use it just as a cannon to shoot yourself from one ear to, and, and, and like basically shoot yourself into the sky. It's, but it's it's a, it's just absolutely fantastic Batman game, and the way elements which I would which they did well was um, for the rare times they had it was there's a there's a few moments which, which they, they took from the past games where um, you used your detective skills to actually piece together a scene to, to actually see what happened. But they only really do that once or twice. I would like to see that more because it actually it, it was more engaging. It actually, felt like you're trying to solve something. Although it was, okay. it, although it was pretty easy and straightforward, but still, it was, it was quite cool. I would like to have seen that to be a He's bit. He's a detective. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's my only issue with with these games is they've not really. Got enough embraced how much because he is like he, he, like one of these things. He's the world's best detective, and the game's never really shown that well enough. Yeah, he's just kind of like this. I would actually at some yeah. point yeah, like to see Sherlock Holmes just beat yeah. to Batman. Though. Yeah, it's like it's <laughs> that, like. Yeah. Be awesome. Probably not going to see that. And just what, like Ian McKellen fighting Christian yeah. Bale. Yeah, but 
at the same time, if I had all the gadgets Batman had of like X-ray vision and just like pr- like seeing a scene and rewind it, I'd be the world's best detective as well. I'd, yeah. like, I, 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 I want to actually I want to have something where you have to sit there and use your brain to suss things out. Yeah, but they, they, they didn't ever quite do that. But there's fewer puzzle yeah. things in. In big games, then. yeah. I That's mean, like, the closest thing there's came Riddler to the challenges. Things. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was yeah. going to say is the Riddler challenges yeah. and the, there's a few that, in the original. I, 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 I see these as well. The, the less, I don't know. Like, I didn't find them. There, there was a few in the past games I, I thought were more tricky than what they were in this one. But maybe it's just because I know what I'm looking for now. And possibly. Um, I mean, is it, it's the same mechanic. I mean, they've it, incorporated the Batmobile more different... into them because it's a Batmobile. It's got like um, in tap mode, you can fire uh, your grappling hook. Which can then um, that uh, that can pull walls down or pull lifts up or um, if a generator's bust, you fire at the generator and it fires up the generator because you're using your engine to get going. Then you can jump out, out of the Batmobile and get to do something. And then you can. What's quite cool is you can remote because that's how generators work, yeah. obviously. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and, then, and you can. Uh, you, 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 you can remote control your Batmobile without being in it, if you know what I mean. So, like, if you need Batman to be standing on somewhere or being in somewhere, like, say, there's a door has to be opened, but the Batmobile has to be hold, hold the door open while, while uh, it's while you go in, you can do that, if, if that makes sense. And then, like, yeah. they incorporate that in the puzzle. But once you first suss that out, the rest of the puzzles all kind of make sense. And I, I think any of them took me, took me more than one or two minutes to kind of to do. Yeah. yeah. But it's still an absolute cracking game, and... Between that and The Witcher Three, those are the two best games of the year so far for me. Yeah, I, I mean to be honest, so uh, I'm still playing The Witcher Three. Um, I've, uh, unlike me normally, I'm very much I hit the sto- the, the story because my uh, attention doesn't last very long, and so I try and do as much as I can of the story to try and get my money's worth, which I don't know seems kind of weird. But The Witcher, I've just spent a lot of time just drifting about. I don't even, I think I've kind of lost track of the story. Yeah. To be honest, I've sort of. Um, left it, and I'm just dancing because I've I've got to um kind of the white. Oh, sorry, I hit my microphone there. I've got to the uh, uh, quite wide. It's got like lots and lots of islands and lots of places I can kind of yeah, move between. The, it's a full yeah the full map. So I'm just meandering now. between. I'm getting on boats and floating across that, the different islands and stuff. That's it's, the best way to play. Just take your yeah, time with yeah. it and just explore rather than going main quest, main quest, main well, quest. Well, and, and just I've, do main quest every now and then. I I probably would have picked up Batman. But if it wasn't for the fact that I'm still quite enjoying The Witcher, yeah. and I'll pick up this Batman game eventually when the when The Witcher kind of bores me a little bit, yeah. but and it'll probably be cheaper at that point. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah, at the moment I'm still kind of drifting through The Witcher. Um, I'd highly recommend that. So, Chiz, I mean, are you saying I, we're we're not at a point where we can recommend the PC game yet? As no, we no, discussed, um, but, yeah. Um, but you would highly recommend the PlayStation or Xbox One version of this. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'd say I've had an absolute. But I've actually played through the, the game twice. <laughs> um, Ch- it should be mentioned Chiz uh, works in a school uh, normally and so he's in the summer holidays just now so he has the time to play through this twice <laughs> um, uh, most of us have to go yeah. to a job every day he is it's a new game plus mode a Batman freak he well. is as yeah, well yeah. I do enjoy I do like Batman so, I mean, yeah, if, you're, if you're a Batman fan you like the past games definitely pick it up and yeah I like, like, what's the other thing like, yeah, for me it's still the best it's combat like, like third person it's combat in gaming because and it, and um, you get the odd person that says, oh, you can just button mash all the way through it. And he's like, no, you can't. If you put this in the hardest mode and try and button mash it, I can assure you, you will not get very far. It's like, do, it's basically pressing the right button or doing the right thing at the right time against the right sort of yeah. its enemy. Yeah, early on, and at the lowest setting, yeah, you could probably get quite far by just mashing the same button. But do that. But at the same time, why would you want to do that? It's like, why wouldn't you want to be... Challenged a little yeah, bit. Be yeah, be Batman and use everything at your disposal and do like a cool fight scene rather than just go and punch, 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 punch. It's like, why would you play the game that way? You're an idiot. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's so you're anyone, money yeah, then. anyone who accuses this of just being a button mashing thing or don't know what the hell they're talking about. Mm. Cool. Um, and uh, so, Sam, have you been playing anything this week that you wanted to talk about? The game that I put in the notes there, Paul, but it's not exactly a new game. All oh, right. Okay. Sorry, Sam. Uh, well, last time I checked, nobody had updated the notes. Hold on. I I'll just pick up, I'll just pull uh, up. Oh, you can tell me where it is actually. Cause it's Fallout New Vegas. All oh, right. I've been okay. Through again. Actually, sorry. Just before you go into that, did you see the the, the link that I put into the the gamer show uh, was around an an update to Baldur's Gate? I thought you'd be quite interested. Yeah. No, not really. Okay. Yeah, that's um, been happening for a while. Unfortunately. No, they did a they did a, a rematch. Was it an iPad or something? Is it? Yeah, they did an i iOS version. And then they did um, Baldur's Gate Expanded or something. And then they see... So everyone's on, just a bit fatter. Yeah. 
Um, I didn't. I didn't actually like. No, it was two they redid, didn't didn't they? And this is uh, one they, they've now done. Oh or right, is this a redo of one? one? Is I it don't really? Know. Okay. Um, sorry, I I, I, so I did mean two first. I think so. Yeah, I, but they didn't redo it. They just gave it better it. graphics. I just, yeah, just same game, just a redo. Updated the textures. Yeah. So I never played New Vegas. What what is better than uh, the Fallout Three? It's not better. Chase had a rather unfortunate history with Fallout New Vegas. So we both got it exactly the same time. And it ran with no hitch whatsoever on my computer. Yeah, it was, and it was, didn't at all on Jesus. It was a buggy piece of <laughs> <laughs> but, but honestly, but, 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 I played... Yeah, but it was known to be... like like, like, like I, It was the, certain the, graphics cards, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, well, it, it was a known problem with it, which it was... like It was Fallout 3 wasn't without its bugs. Although I played Fallout 3 and it was totally fine. Yeah. And But there was people out there who had issues with it. Well, you would have thought by the time this game came along, all those bugs would be squashed. But in fact, the developers found new bugs to put in it. Well, wasn't and, it? <laughs> it was and, done and by it, a different... ran, uh, Yeah, it was done by... It was Obsidian, was it not? Yeah. And um, they, uh, they found <clears throat> some new bugs. They felt like they gave the first... They felt three was missing. And yeah, um, it, it, I did eventually complete it, but I had to abandon it but for a while. You did complete it eventually. Yeah, and yeah, but I, I enjoyed it. But it was just the, the first few weeks, it was just kind of like... This game hates my guts, and <laughs> but, and I, I wasn't the only person. This happened to a lot of people. I say it's both games have been known to be quite buggy with, with the launch day anyway. And actually, I think it was New Vegas was known to be even more buggy than three. Yeah, I think so. But you ran fine, which is good for you, and you're an asshole. But um... <laughs> <laughs> at the time, it was just. I remember there was just a week of constant phone calls between <laughs> me and Jiz of Jiz going, "Where are you now?" You asshole! <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, th- I actually think I enjoyed once it got going. I enjoyed the story of it was New Vegas more than yeah. It's what Fallout. <laughs> Fallout Three is is the kind of dark, moody one. The original, the first Fallout was quite kind of full on, but the second Fallout was was quite kind of wacky in certain ways. Like, they'd add in Dark really... sense of humour and whatnot. Really random stuff. New Vegas stuff. recaptured that yeah. sense of humour better. Yeah, it really did. New Vegas has got a lot of quite odd funny bits in it, and it's right. also got more of the kind of element of... Well, the main, that kind of steampunky, yeah. weirdy kind of technology, the 1950s right, okay. And the main yeah. body's yeah. Chandler Bing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it, it's, it's, it's good. It's really okay. enjoyable. Okay. Which what apparently go- he did the role because he was a big fan of this of that game series as well. Apparently. All right, okay. What well, what made you go back to New Vegas, Sam? Given that you have access to, um, uh, I forgot the name of it. Eighteen eighty two. Eighteen eighty two. Order. Order eighteen eighty two. I haven't even plugged in the PS four. All right, okay, okay. And it, so, what made you go back to Fallout New Vegas? Um, because I love it, and because Fallout Four is coming up. Ah, uh, you just wanted to get the nostalgia. I have actually booked off the first um, the first I'm, day of d- release and the second day of release. Uh, as Fallout as well. 4. No, he's not doing it for this. We're both going to book off probably Mad Max. Probably a long week. No, for Total War. To, uh, War, uh, War, 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 War Warhammer. Warhammer. Total, yeah. <laughs> um, and just just before we finish up, then do you want to just give a quick review of F one? Because otherwise, it'll be bees yeah, in the well, post again. Um, yeah, uh, everyone took really enjoying it so far. Um, obviously, the steering wheel is, he- is helping that, helping with that as well. Yeah. Um, it arrived for me early on the Wednesday, last Wednesday. There was a day one patch coming that came on Thursday, which did improve the game because it was. I did notice there was. I, I didn't get to play a total lot, but I suspect I probably would have found quite a lot of bugs with it for what I was reading online. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's a good. Really, Really, uh, the handling model feels fantastic. Um, driving with no, with all it, its assists off and catching the car in a slide, or like it's really sick because of the way F1 cars are uh, uh, the past couple of years. There's loads of torque, so you have to be easy on the throttle. You just spin the car straight away when you're coming out of a corner. So you have to be really light on the throttle at first and get on the power as early as you can, but not too early or you'll spin. But yeah, I'm really enjoying that. Um, done a few races in the wet. It's all good. The AI don't seem to cheat in the rain like they did in past rain. Like it didn't seem to be quite close with them. 
does have a few bugs, as every game seems to do at launch. There's seems to be every race, there always seems to be one or two cars that get trapped, AI cars get trapped in the pit lane. It, it seems to be when two of the same cars are pitting, one car queues up behind it, which is okay, that happens in real F1 sometimes, and the one pulls away. But what happens, it, there's a glitch where the other car doesn't pull away and it just sits there and they sit there for the entire race, but they don't get, one will maybe get taken out of the race, but the one car that's trying to get into their pit lane just sits there for the whole race, just gets lapped by, by everyone. So they need to fix that. Uh, so, sorry, excuse my ignorance here, but what? How does that impact the game? Is it just unrealistic? Well, is that yeah, yeah. It's mean, like, it's like well, it, it's just a AI. It's a. I've, I've read it happened to the player sometimes. It's not happened to me, but I've seen it happen to the AI quite often. And I've read online right. it's happened to some people. Oh, I get if it happened to you. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you'd have to reset the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So they. they need, they need to fix it. Like it's it's mainly AI elements that need mm, to be fixed because yeah. um, uh, I've, I've had a few moments where the AI, when you're coming round to lap them, they either they either don't make too much effort to get out your way when they're supposed to because you're coming to lap them, mm. or they'll make a massive attempt. And basically, I, I was coming round and it was Mel, it was Melbourne up behind it was Perez, and. He very clearly moved it the way, but done so by driving straight into the wall next to him. All right, okay, nice. <laughs> nice. Like, no, no, thank you very much. <laughs> um, very, very, very polite these Mexicans. Um, the yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's, it's just a few AI bugs. That, like it's there's nothing totally game breaking for me so far, but it, it does have a few bugs which need, which can be patched up. But the main element of that dual hand and everything is fantastic. So I'm cool. I'm liking it so far. A few annoyances, which it's, it's, it's still I feel like they're sort of bugs that maybe should have been picked up and fixed yeah. before launch. As with but it's not; it's no PC Batman Arkham Knight, thankfully. But enjoying it, and hopefully, like if bugs and stuff bother you, it'd be interesting in this game. Then maybe hold off for a few weeks and, mm. or a month until it's patched up a bit better. So you're playing that on Xbox One? Yeah. All right. Okay. And get a few races with Russell. And uh, yep, yeah, I'd one. Like, well, yeah. One of the thing the features missing is the co-op career. They've taken that. Oh, which is, yeah. There's a lot. There's, they've, ta- they've taken features out because they've built a new. Their, their excuse is they've built a whole, whole new game engine, which all their times went into. So it's lost features. So it's like hitting the reset button for the new generation of consoles. Right. Okay. So it's missing features. So they have to reincorporate these features back in as they go. So which, there's is, the which is which I understand at the same time. It's just kind of like, but you had all these features in last in last year's game. I want them in this because like like. I, like one of the main selling points for me and your brother was doing our co-op career, mm-hmm. which, which you can't do anymore. You can do a multiplayer session, um, and like you can set up your own championship in multiplayer, but it has to consist of other human players. Like what we used to do was me and Russell on the same team against AI. Uh, um, it, it was AI for whole that season, and it, it all, all would require just me and Russell being online, online at the same time. Now I say I would need set as many folk as I knew with the game or randoms and then for them to turn up every week to play this right, game and, okay. and, and do like and then if, if, if and then we're not all necessarily the good thing about me and Russell is we're much the same sort of skill levels it's always quite good racing to get say up to like a few friends or max yeah. 16 friends all the same sort of skill levels you're going to have to include me and Sam yeah. so <laughs> yeah. I mean we're it's only a... really good for knocking out other players yeah. in corners and stuff I mean so yeah so it's <laughs> it, like they have improved it but they proved it where you can do that because you couldn't do that in the past so if I've like set up a championship of, of your mates and load your mates it's good they've got that now but I want but you would co- like the option of a, other a, a, a co-op yeah. of just one to two people and on, and you're both on the same team playing through a championship so you're against each other and the AI and whatever yeah. and it, that, that was really good fun and we did that every year and I take it they've um, they've dropped the the the, uh, the whole historical cars as well because they had that yeah. like two or three years ago yeah they, they had that one year I think it was 2012 or 2013 and they've not brought that back so mm. I, I didn't really venture back into that but it was always a nice thing to have and yeah it was a nice I, option and yeah. yeah I think that was probably the high, the high probably their game that got the highest reviews it was when they did that one so I a lot of people liked it, mm-hmm. so but I understand why because they kind of they do have to focus all the energy onto the current F1 setup and yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't understand like there's no excuse why it wasn't in last year's game, but I'd understand why it's not in this year's game because they're building a, a new game engine. But I do feel it's still a few key features that should have been like the co op should have been in it. I think yeah, yeah, and well even they've changed the single player. Um, what I what I used to like to do like was the element of basically putting yourself in the game and working your way up from being a, a crap team trying to prove yourself and earning uh, earning errors a contract a hard team so it was you in the game yeah and it, it, that's the way I like to do it now you have to choose an existing driver 
and kind of pretend so that it's, you... It's it's funny they've taken that it's out like, because... I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like well, Jensen Button or Asshole Hamilton. They're still doing that kind of things in like... well, So in, in FIFA, you can still put yourself yeah. in and you work your way up and eventually get to play for yeah, Scotland, England, whoever you loads want. of people like doing. And same with um, Madden as well. Yeah. You could play as a quarterback. It's not quite the same because you have to still choose... I'm never actually tried to see if I can put myself in, but you choose a player, which is kind of the same as F1, but then you yeah. play as them and, and work your way up. But yeah. Anyway, so you would uh, recommend it? Yeah, I'd recommend it. As I said, there's a few features missing which are annoying. There's a few bugs, but overall, the, um, it's just probably the best hand on F1 games so far that there's been, I think. Cool. Really, really enjoying the hand on. Grand. Okay. Well, um, Sam, do you have anything more to add to that? No. Of your vast knowledge of racing games and Formula 1? No. And, and, and being the... Huge uh, uh, pa- <laughs> Pablo Montoya fan that you are. That, that's Is it. Is that that Mexican hooker you have? That mm. <laughs> and on that, uh, we will say good night to you. And uh, so, quick programming note: we will not have a show in two weeks' time. Um, uh, Repeat: I, we will not have a show in two weeks' time. That was really Thanks. loud. In my that was really, really loud. <laughs> um, the uh, reason being, I'm moving house, and basically the studio's going to have to get disconnected. So we will be back in four weeks uh, in our normal schedule, and we will be in a new studio where Sam and Chiz will be comfier, I'm hoping, with new chairs. I, I think the way to do it is just to burn this place down and buy new stuff. <laughs> it's probably quicker. Um, so we will be back in four weeks. There will not be a show in two weeks. So thank you very much for listening. Um, if you want to get a hold of us, it's BritishTechNetwork at gmail.com or tweet me at Paul Wheatley on Twitter, uh, or Sam is at Dr. Nasty Flaps. And the network is Just stop at... giving it out. It's <laughs> been months since I've looked. <laughs> at British Tech on Twitter. Um, Find me in my shop, Soiled Chaps. <laughs> uh, please come over to our Facebook page. Just search for The Gamer Show on Facebook. Uh, there's quite a good community over there. People chatting and discussing things. Sam put up a photograph of a Spectrum that he got delivered off at work yeah, the other it? day. Which is... Uh, oh, yeah, you had, uh, cool. it, oh, what, oh, what's it? Oh, I've forgotten. The, what was the game again? It was Decathlon. Some... Uh, Daily Thompson. Daily, Daily Thompson. Thompson's Daily the Thompson's castle. Castle. Yeah. yeah. It's freaking amazing. Really. So, uh, Sam's been uh, playing with some retro consoles and we're having a discussion about that in our Facebook group. Head on over to our Google Plus group, but we never check it. So, uh, yeah. you know. We've not done our gaming thing in a while. We should get that gaming. Soon yeah, that's, so that's a good idea. I wonder if we could link that up. That'd yeah. be quite cool. Um, probably not. <laughs> no, probably not, no. Um, or uh, if you just want the full network, British Tech on um, Facebook, British Tech Network. Um, so, thank you very much, and uh, we will see you in four weeks. Good night. Toodles. Toodles.